The Lord is good, amen. amen. Somebody say all the time. All the time. And all the time. God is good. He is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We always point all the glory to Jesus, but we want to thank Jimmy for playing with us this morning. Y'all get him around. Amen. Amen. And when they move down here, we'll have them all set up over there. <laughs> glory to God. Bring all their people with them. <laughs> glory to God. If you would this morning be turning in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians the first chapter. As always, it's my prayer today that each and every one of us would let the Lord be high and lifted up in our lives this morning. Amen. That our focus wouldn't be on necessarily what's going on in our world today, in, in our personal world or in our, you know, in the world world, but that today, that right here and right now, we allow Jesus to be the center of everything going on. I promise you this. We read it this morning. If we'll put him first. All these things will be added to you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Do what you want to do, Jesus. Speak to our hearts. Even change our life, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Are you in the book of Ephesians? Amen. The Bible says in verse 16, Paul says, I cease not to give thanks for you mention." making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who, who believe according to the working of His mighty power which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in heavenly places far, somebody say far, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church, let me read that again. The church, the fullness of him Glory to God. The church is to be Him in bodily form as we walk this earth. The church, not just Him, but everything that pertains to Him, the fullness of Him. The Bible says in another place, as He is, so are we. As He is right now, seated at the right hand of majesty on high, so are we right here and right now. Glory to God. Verse 19 again. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe? The New Living Translation says, For us who believe Him. Who's this for? Believe. Who? Believers. That's right. Members only. Come on. Y'all remember that jacket? This is members only stuff right here. Anybody can be a member if they want to be. But, until, but this right here is for those who are members. For those of us who what? Believe. What an incredible... Did, 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 glory to God. What, what a passage. The same... He says... He goes on to say... The same incredible power that raised Jesus from the dead... Listen to this. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead... And set Him at the right hand of majesty on high. Okay? That power. He said that same exact power. Okay? Is directed towards you. Ephesians 3 says it's in you. Yeah. According to the working of His mighty power in you, Ephesians 3 says. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is directed for, to, towards those who believe. <coughs> Glory to God. Any believers in here this morning? Yeah. I'm talking about this power isn't reserved for just an elite few super Christians. It's not just for those who are good enough, know enough, okay, uh, do enough good deeds. You know what the qualifier is here for this mighty power to be operating in your life? Well, let me read it one more time. And what is the exceeding greatness of His, greatness of his power for us who? What's the qualifier? Believe. Simple belief. Simple belief. 
Simple, childlike acceptance yeah. by faith of what God says. Yeah. Glory to God. How many knows? just like with almost every other blessing or benefit in the kingdom of God, uh, that's, uh, those are required. Church, unimaginable, heavenly power directed to you, deployed in your behalf, coming through you. Amen? If you only believe. If you only believe. I woke up this morning and I was singing that song. Y'all know that song, Let the River Flow. Let the River Flow. And I don't know why I thought this. And I don't know why it has never crossed my mind before. Maybe it has yours. But I was just, you know, let the, let the poor man say what? I'm rich in him. Let the lost man say I'm found. You know, remember that scripture, the Bible says to do that. But I was singing that song in my head. And then I sang, let the river flow. And I thought, wow, how do you let the river flow? Well, let the poor say what? Let the dead say what? I live. Let the, those who are... You, you speak. You're letting the river flow when you're the poor man saying, I'm rich. When the, when the dead saying, I'm alive. When the lost is saying, I'm found. I'm letting the river flow. Amen. Holy Ghost move in power. Amen. Amen. We ought to let the river flow in here this morning. Amen. Amen. We ought to let the, somebody, somebody just speak in faith today. Something that you're believing God for. Amen. A promise you're standing for. Father, I believe today in G. I'm letting the river flow. Where is it coming from? From within. I believe today in Jesus' name that Charles J. Howard will be born again. Amen. I believe it. He's going to accept the gospel. Amen. Amen. With signs and wonders following. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that. Oh, yeah. The Bible says that the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead is directed to me and through it's working on my behalf because I believe. Yes. Somebody say, I only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Yes. How many of Jesus told Jerry is to only believe? I want to look at that this morning. Uh, Mark chapter 5, I believe it is. Mark the 5th chapter, if you'll turn there. Hallelujah. Only believe. Any believers in here this morning? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know, you can be a believer, you can, and, you, and you can believe, but you can have a lot of other stuff going on in your life too. But, but Jesus' word is the only believer. Yeah. Are you in Mark chapter 5? Yeah. That's good. I need to get there too. <laughs> Verse 21, And when Jesus was... Passed over again by ship unto the other side. Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. I mean, that's a proper response right there. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. I love his confession. His confession is, if you'll come lay hands on her, she'll be healed and she'll live. That was his confession. That was his expectation. Okay? Glory to God. Jairus believed Jesus could do it, didn't he? You come lay hands on her and she'll be healed. Jairus believed that. He had faith. Jairus had faith. I mean, he might not have had as much faith as the centurion over in Matthew chapter 8. He told Jesus... You just send the word only. And that's enough. Jairus might not have had centurion type faith. He might not have had the faith of the Syrophoenician woman. Remember, she had a daughter who, was, who had a devil. We was talking a little bit about devils this morning. She had a daughter who had a devil. And she told Jesus, if I could just get a crumb of that stuff, of that bread you're giving out, she'd be whole. He might, she might not, oh, Jairus might not have had Mom praying for a demon possessed daughter type faith. But how many knows Jesus will meet you where you're at? Jesus will meet you where you're at. Glory to God. And Jesus went with him. And many people followed him and thronged him. Glory to God. And, and of course, there's this incredible story of the woman with the issue of blood. We're not going to read all that this morning. But in short, as they're heading to Jerry's house, they, he comes across this woman who's had this issue of blood for 12 years. And, and well, she has faith. She has faith. She reaches out, touches Jesus' clothes. She's made whole. The Bible says when she heard of Jesus, amen. How does faith come? 
But he comes by here. And she had faith. She heard of Jesus. Amen. And, um, and she acted on that. Really, it's an incredible story. Technically, uh, Jesus did nothing in that encounter. Jesus was just walking by, and this woman, on her own, grabbed a hold of his clothes and was made whole. I mean, technically, Jesus did nothing. He didn't qualify her. He didn't disqualify her. He didn't say, I perceive there's somebody in the crowd today with the issue of blood. Come forward, and the Lord's going to heal you today. Nothing. He just was heading his way. He was heading to Jerry's his house. And she, on her own, Believe and receive. I love that. Because yeah. that, that sure throws a monkey wrench and, and folk who, 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 that whole concept of, that God chooses some to heal and hope that you're in that lot, hope that He picked you. Well, He didn't choose her at all in one sense. She chose Him. She acted on it. Glory to God. How many, no, it's fortunately for you, God has chose you already. Uh, God's yeah. already made healing available. Isaiah 53, with His stripes, amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank Jesus. First Peter 2, 24, by His stripes you made whole. She just decided to get hers. Verse 34, and Jesus says this uh, to her. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy place. Somebody say whole. Oh. You know, you ought not let your faith stop at some. Y'all not, not let your faith leave yet partially or, or kind of or little better. Hello? Hello? Church, let your faith bring you to whole. Amen? Amen. Whole. Amen. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And we'll pick up our, our, our story. Verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said something. He said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Now this is, this is kind of funny to me. Sometimes the Bible cracks me up. Jesus is speaking, and verse 35 says, while he's speaking, he's interrupted. Amen? And so, when the interruption starts speaking, Jesus hears what he said and interrupts him. <laughs> Listen to it again. While he yet spake, there came some. As soon as Jesus heard what he was saying, he said, Hey! Don't listen to that. And he cometh to the house of the ruler, uh, and he suffered no man to follow them, save Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make you this ado and weep? And the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. And when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, said unto her, uh, Talitha Kuma, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. In verse 43, and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded them that something should be given her to eat. If you would look at verse 36 one more time. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Now, again, Jesus has been sought out by Jairus, and Jesus' word to him and to us this morning is, do not be afraid, only believe. Friend, we cannot allow fear or anything else to destroy our ability to trust God. Y'all hear me today? The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Okay? The just shall live by faith. Don't be afraid. The just, the just shall not live in fear. Ours is a faith life. Amen. We live by faith. Our God is a good God. Can somebody say amen? amen. He's, he's, he's an awesome God. He's powerful. He's all-knowing. He loves us. He's for us. Why fear? Why fear? Why fear? You understand fear is a force. The Bible says fear is a spirit. Now, fear is a, fear is a spirit that folk have to deal with whether they're saved or unsaved. Bible says it's of the devil. Okay, 2 Timothy 1 7. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Okay? So if God didn't give it to us, we know where it came from. Over and over, Jesus threw out the whole word of God. He reassures us concerning fear. He says, Don't be afraid. Believe. Fear not. Fear not is the most commanded phrase 
in the Word of God. You will find that command more than anything else. Fear not. Fear not. Fear comes when there's an absence of faith. So if it takes faith to please God, no wonder God so, so repeats Himself so often, whether it be through the angel or the tongues of men or, or however, and tells us to fear not. Because fear comes when there's an absence of faith. Now, as good churchgoers, we understand that the absence of faith is a result of a lack of hearing. How's faith come? So an absence of faith is, is directly as a direct result to a lack of hearing. And hearing the Word of God. Amen? And if you'll hear God's Word, the faith it brings, Galatians 5 eight. how does it work? By? Say love. love. You're absolutely right. Faith works by love. So if we'll, if we'll hear what God's Word says, it'll bring faith that works by love. And what does love do occur according to 1 John 4.18? Perfect love casts out all fear. See the connection. We, we seduco that, didn't we, Coach? <laughs> that's, where the, that's where those numbers go. You can't focus on the negative. You've got to stand in faith. Faith comes by hearing. And since faith comes by hearing, you need to be aware of what you're listening to. What did Jesus say when the voices came? Don't listen to that. Don't be afraid. Only believe. He interrupted the voices that came. Sometimes we need to interrupt some of those things that, that are trying to speak to us. You need to be aware of what you're listening to. Is it bringing faith or is it bringing fear? Listening to the wrong voices is dangerous, friend. 1 Corinthians 14 tells us that there are so many voices in this world and none of them is without significance. In other words, they're all trying to say something to you. Amen? Verse 36, it says, as soon as Jesus heard the word, as soon as Jesus heard what they were saying, He, he said, he, he stopped listening to it. Amen? Sometimes when we hear what people are saying, we need to just end the conversation right there. I don't mean to be rude, but I, I, I'm not listening to that. I don't mean to be ugly, act like I'm holy, holy, this, that, and the other, but I am not listening to that. I'm not even going to, I don't have the time to let it enter my ears to even have to deal with casting it out later. I already know where this is going. No. Sometimes when my wife gets, <sighs> when my wife is just fired up with the things of God, all that, Somebody come in like me and the devil used me to try to aggravate. Chill. No, no, I'm not listening. I'm like, but I'm trying to. I'm not listening. Yeah. I can respect that. Yeah. Because if I sit back and think for a minute, am I bringing something pure, edifying, thoughtful? Maybe not. Yeah. If the devil can get your ear just a little, if he can whisper just a little doubt, a little failure, a little half-truth, get you to listen, it's half over. Yeah. The fight's halfway over. Get you double-minded, James 1.8. What does it say? Unstable in all your ways. Let not that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord, James 1.7. Why? Because you won't be expecting God to move. If you're, if you're in fear, you're not in faith, you're not expecting God to move. So many times we want faith to come, but fear is, is overtaking us and, and choked out faith. We need to strengthen our faith that that doesn't happen. Careful what you're listening to, friends. I, I think of the serpent. All he did was just suggest to Eve. Has God really said? Mm -hmm. Just, just a suggestion. And she listened. Hmm. What does he say to you that you're listening to? You're not good enough. You don't deserve God to do anything for you. You act like such and such all week long. Get to church on Sunday and all this, that, and the other. And you think God's going to do something for you? That's lies, man. I'm so glad what God does for me is based on Jesus, not on me. <laughs> Glory to God. I will tell you, if you get that point right there, you go far. And it's all based on... <laughs> no. Oh, that's too big for God. Some things will never change. He may do that for them, but He ain't doing that for you. You're too much like your dad. You're too much like your mom. You never finish. Come on, church. Yeah. Working on your expectations. Working on your what you, what you can believe. Stop you from expecting. You know what, Jesus? He paid no attention to those. Uh, uh, and He told Jairus to do the same exact thing. 
They started speaking as soon as Jesus heard what they were saying. He listened to them no more and he told Jairus, don't listen either. I mean, there are times when you better be paying attention to what somebody's saying. Yeah. Save your life. But there's other times when you hear where somebody's going with something, you better shut it off right then. It'll save your life. Yeah. It's amazing what we give our attention to. We, them phones, and I love a phone because it's, it's just... It's just so handy and it does so much. And, I don't, and it's, 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 it's almost like a necessity. It really is. I mean, I'm not just saying that. You know, it almost is. Everything that I, that I do, that thing helps and makes better and, and quicker and this, that, and the other. I mean, I can, I, if I can't remember a scripture, I can remember three words, I can pull it up with that. But don't let that phone have you. Folk paying too much attention to their phone. That thing chirps and folk are about breaking their neck trying to get to it to see who, what it was, this, that, and the other. Ain't cracked their Bible in a week, but let that phone go. They stop what they're doing, burn their hand, about cut it off if they're chopping wood, I don't know, to get that phone. Don't let that phone have you. I know everything wants your attention. Jesus knows everything wants your attention. That's why I said Philippians 4 8, whatsoever things are true. Not everything, not everything, listen to me church, not everything that wants your attention, but what sort of things are true, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, if it's of a good report, if it has virtue, if it's praiseworthy, Amen. think on that, pay attention to that, don't fill your mind with junk, filth, questionable stuff. You can't afford to. I'm not preaching a. I'm not preaching. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some holiness message right here tonight in the, in the, or this morning in the sense that you know that's sending you to hell. This that. And the other. I'm saying you can't afford to fill your mind with that because there's coming up something that's going to try to bring fear, and you're not going to be able to operate in faith if you've been focusing on the wrong things. You're not going to be ready. Because you ever notice things don't jump. Normally, it's not the attack when you're on top of the mountain. It's when you're just chilling or things have already kind of this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> so whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever. You know, the Bible says this in uh, Proverbs 4 23. It says, Above all else, keep your heart, guard your heart. Listen to me, church. You're in Sunday school, I had this in me, and so I came out. But if the Word of God tells you, Look, above everything else, you better be paying close attention. Above all else that's going on, above all else that's taking place, if, you, if the scriptures say above all else, you need to stop immediately and make sure, is this operating in my life? Above all else, guard your heart or your mind is, is really what he's referring to. You're thinking, what you're dwelling on, what you're what you're not allowing to play in here. I used to have a friend of ours, and and, and he had this great expression, and, and, I, and I remember to this day, and he goes, "I refuse to let my mind be a playground That's right. for every thought that just wants to come and seesaw or swing, yeah. hopscotch, and all that." <laughs> you can't afford to let your mind be a playground for every thought that wants to come and play. Mm -hmm. So above all else, keep your heart. Jesus knows everything wants your attention. Church, God wants your attention too. The enemy wants your attention too. James 4, 7, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee. Not assist the devil. By giving him all your attention. No, he says, resist, not assist. You assist, you give him all your attention, he's not going nowhere. He's making himself at home. Mighty comfy here. Thank you very much. You've got to submit to God. Give God your attention, in other words. And then He flees. You can't listen to every voice. Listen to the voices in our passage this morning. Verse 35. Your daughter's dead. Why trouble Jesus anymore? Verse 38. It says, The ruler of the synagogue seeth the tumult, and, the, and the tumult, and they're weeping, and they're wailing greatly. Matthew 9 tells us the same story. It tells us that the, the minstrels were playing their funeral music. Making a great noise. I preached a message one time about this passage. And I said, I wonder if they was in South Jerusalem. 
Because if, if, it's, if they was in South Jerusalem, hey, I can already tell you what they were playing. They were playing Amazing Grace and something by Leonard Skinner. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ain't a funeral I've done in the South with anybody that I grew up with or brother that you didn't have Amazing Grace, Free Bird, or Simple Man, or Tuesday Gone, or, or something like that involved also in Graveside. So I don't know whether they was from the south or the north of Jerusalem. But they were making a great noise. Verse 40 says there were some more voices, voices there. And they were laughing him to scorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, said, he said she was asleep. What is he? Nuts? Laughing to scorn means, means they laughed so much. They ridiculed. They made fun of. They bullied. Is that how we say it today? They bullied him about this. About, you dumb blah, 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 blah. You don't know what you're talking about. They laughed him to scorn. They laughed so much that it turned into anger. They were laughing so much. They're lucky I'm not God. That's all I've got to say. I'm not so much like Jesus as I am like Elijah. Remember was Elijah or Elisha? One of them, one of them, one of them. One of them kids said, hey, yo, ball headed and some bears came out and killed them all. Yeah. Where's Priscilla? Always talking about my forehead. <laughs> <They're> Watch it. <laughs> not Jesus. He's not like that. That's not what he came to do. Luke 9, 56 says, the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. How many knows that's the same today? The, the, the Good Speed translation translates verse 36 like this. Jesus paid no attention to what they said. I wonder if you and I can be disciplined enough when somebody says something that we could just, just not pay it any attention. Whether it be at work, at play, something coming against. He paid no attention to what they said. In other words, he ignored them. How many understand you can do this? You can ignore voices. My kids do it all the time. I know they can do it. Amen. <laughs> Church. Oh, it's coming to that now. <laughs> Things got so bad you gotta go to church now. I gotcha. You know what I'm saying? They just want to use you. They don't want your money. They don't know what they're talking about, friends. I'm telling you, listen to that kind of talk cost you your miracle. I think it was last week we were talking about that guy with the withered hand who was at church that day. I bet, I bet he was glad he was there and didn't sleep in. Amen. We might not have read his story about stretch forth your hand and be made whole. He'd been at home eating fruit loops and his hand still withered. Mark 11, 24 says, when you pray, believe that you've received and you'll have. Friend, I'm telling you, Jairus' faith was an important part of this miracle. And he didn't need fear. He didn't need doubt. He didn't need any of that trying to choke out his belief. Fear not, Jesus said. Only believe. The Bible is clear. You can have faith and you can have fear in the same heart. They can both be in there, okay? And the truth is, it only really it only takes a small amount of faith to accomplish your miracle. Jesus said, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you might say this tree, be thou removed. Now he's not necessarily talking about faith that remains small. Nowhere in the Bible does he talk about your faith remaining small. He's talking about if you had faith even as small as a seed, you could plant it, you could tend to it. It could grow. It could produce the fruit that you need to move that tree. To move that mountain. But how are you going to do that? You're going to tend your garden, ain't you? You're going to have to, what is it? You're going to, have to get them rock, that, soften up that hard ground, Mark 4. Get those stones out, those rocky places. Pull them weeds. If it's choked out by doubt and unbelief, Mark chapter 4, it'll make your faith Uneffective. I think it's Mark 4, maybe it's Luke 8 or Matthew 13. They're in all those uh, Gospels where he says, he says that, that the, the, thorny, the thorny ground, the weedy ground is those who have let the cares of this world and other things come in and choke the, the seed that it bears no fruit. One translation says that the fruit doesn't come to maturity. In other words, what faith is in there gets choked out. Just like your squash plants will eventually, or your tomato plants in your garden. If you don't get all that wild stuff growing in there, eventually it'll overtake that stuff. It'll choke it out. I planted crepe myrtles, trees, and had grass. Just choke them to where they won't hardly grow. 
Anybody ever had nerves? You know, a little, a pound of crepe, maybe that, like, that big around. And just years go by and it hardly not get any bigger. Grass all grown up tight against it. But if you'll take it and you'll just knock that grass a foot or two around in a circle away from that thing, well, then a couple years that thing will look like your arms standing there. Why? Because that grass is choking it out. It's choking the nutrients. Whatever it's doing is preventing that tree, no, not tree, from being all it could be. But if you just take it and get that stuff out, man, that, that crape myrtle will take off. Be nice and tall. I like them tall. How about y'all? I like them tall. I like them when they look all weathery looking in there. Look like arms and I like them like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus was countering Jerry's faith by telling him to only believe, to don't panic. How many of us that might be a word today for so many in here that don't panic? Panic uh, is unreasonable fear, friend. Unreasonable fear. Why, why should Jerry's panic when Jesus, the Creator, is with him? Heading to his home, amen. Church, is Jesus with you this morning or not? If he's not with you, you need to get born again. Get him with you, amen. That would be a reason to panic today if you're not born again. But if you are born again, there's no reason to fear, amen, what the report may sound like. Whose report are you going to believe? You're going to believe the report you already got? Or are you waiting on some other report to come that you want to put your faith in? You ought to believe the one right in front of you this morning. There's no report bad enough to make us panic. You say, well, I can only say for me, God's on our side. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Church, the one who rose from the grave, what is that same mighty power, Ephesians 1.19, that raised Christ from the dead, seated Him at God's own right hand, is directed towards you. We read it. Amen. What is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe? For us who believe. What problem do you have that he can't handle? If you panic, you're operating in fear. Fear affects your faith. I know the enemy tries to drive uh, your faith down by getting you to fear, but don't listen to him. Listen to Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. Y'all not listen to somebody trying to cause you harm. Look at, listen to someone who wants the best for you. Be not afraid. Only believe. You know, Jesus, Jesus didn't say the situation wasn't bad. Did he? He didn't say, oh, it's not bad, it's good. No, the situation was bad. I mean, the girl was lying on her deathbed. Sounds like to us in the natural, she died. He didn't say the situation wasn't bad, but what he was saying is it wasn't over. Yeah. Yeah. See, some people, sometimes people act like it's over just because it's bad. Right. This might help me. Amen. Sometimes people act like it's all over just because things are bad. Jesus always gets the last word if you let him. Praise God. How many times in the Bible was it bad? How many believe it was bad when they was eating donkey heads and dirt, uh, doves dung? Uh, pretty bad. How many think it was bad when they was, they was deciding whose kid was going to be lunch for the day? How many of it was bad? That's pretty bad. You may have had some bad times, but I don't know if it's ever been that bad in your house. I mean, a man like me would. I'm, I'm opening English peas before it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Past the boiled eggs. The worst kind of eggs that there are. Boy. <laughs> I ain't seen that bad. But, friend, the Bible's full of history that things got bad, but it wasn't over. Yeah. Just because things are. Just because things are bad, stop looking at them like they're over. Hallelujah. This was bad. Jesus didn't say it was bad. Jesus said, I'm coming. And despite the bad news that came, he kept on going to Jerry's house. As a matter of fact, he paid no attention. It, 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 it really don't matter what storms come your way. Storms come. It rains on the just and the unlust. Just. You know, storms come to the wise and the foolish. They come. But Jesus, He's still there. He hasn't changed. He's still good. Can somebody say amen? He's still got a positive outlook on things. Hallelujah. That's what I want you to hear me here this morning. If, if you refuse to give in to fear in times of adversity or times of storms, refuse to let go of your faith, Jesus can. 
He can resurrect it, amen. He can bring life uh, to your mind, your body, whatever, your finances. He is the resurrection, the Bible says. He is the final saying so. It is not over. That same mighty power that raised him from the dead is working on your behalf, amen. He has a plan for you today, for your family this morning. It, even if it looks dead now, resurrection power is available according to Ephesians 1, 19, for those who believe. Not just super Christians. Not just those who've done good enough. Don't spit, chew, talk to people who do. You know? No, for those who believe. You may think it's too late, but God's always on time. Oh, they're weeping and wailing here in Mark chapter 5. Emotions are in motion and things are running high. But when you got a word from the Lord, come on, somebody. When you got a word from the Lord, you don't listen to that. You don't listen to that bad news. You know what happened? You, you, you listen to that stuff? You can lose your mind. You can lose your mind listening to all that. And the Bible says, guard your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart. You think it's above all that you keep your mind, you keep your heart? You think it's important? Because as a man thinketh, nothing nobody can do. Don't think like that. How many of those there may be nothing that nobody can do? But that don't mean there ain't nothing that can be done. Come on. Amen. There may, there may, be, there may be something man can't, there may be nothing man can do for you. But that doesn't mean there's nothing that can't be done about the situation. Because with God all things are possible. Amen. With man, it may be impossible. There may be nothing that they can do that has never worked out for nobody before. Nobody's ever recovered from that as far as they know. That don't mean it's over. That don't mean it's done. Fear not, only believe. Focusing on that negative stuff costs you your miracle, friend. I wonder how many... I wonder if there's been those times when I needed the miracle working power of God to operate in my life and I let fear cost me. Maybe because I didn't have my gut. Maybe because I hadn't been pulling the weeds lately. Yeah. I let them grow up and choke. When I, when I was needing fruit, there wasn't nothing there. It, 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 you, you ever see that? You know, sometimes my fig tree will put out big old beautiful figs and then get real hot. And then all of a sudden they'll start putting out little figs again. But you can't eat them. They just fall off. Just little, they just fall off like nothing. I can't, I can't, I can't wait till I need, till I need that, I need the, the, the faith to operate in my life to, uh, to, to be cultivating faith. Amen. I can't wait till the strong man is kicked in the front door to try to find him up. I need to be like the three little piggies. He can huff and puff. He ain't coming in. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, come on. Jesus is walking into the room with Jairus and his crew, okay? He's walking in the room. Jairus has got a word from the Lord, okay? Don't slam the door in the Lord's face by allowing fear to grip your heart. How many times have we stopped Him by not believing, by giving in to our fears? Listening to the voices of our past, of our failures, of our fears. Perhaps listening to the voices of even well-intended people, but ill-informed people. Well, you know, God doesn't heal everybody. They may mean well, but they are ill-informed. Maybe, maybe it's the voice of someone who loves you. Loves you now, but doesn't know any better. They love you. You may be their child. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that don't mean that don't mean they that, that, that don't mean they aren't capable of some wrong thinking. Yeah. Love you, want the best for you, thinking they're doing you some kind of favor by comforting you in some manner. 
But it's not bringing faith. Remember old brother used to come here. I think his name clean, very clean. He told me a story about it. He was in Baptist church for years. And, um, he's telling me a story of this, this lady out in the shores. Went to the Baptist church with him for years. She's older and she got to where she got to where she couldn't get around and things weren't looking good for her. And, and um, so he'd go visit her. And, um, and anyway, he 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 believed in that God was a healer. He believed in the and some of those things that some people don't so much put a lot of stock in. He got to tell her of these things. And other people would come around and they'd, who loved her and they'd tell her other things and yeah. this, that, and the other. Bless her heart. He said there came a day when she stopped opening the door for them. <laughs> she said, I love you, but I can't listen to that. Yeah. I love you, but and I know you care about me, but you're not helping me. Yeah. I'm trying to believe in faith and what you're saying it, it may it may soothe, it may make my flesh feel better but it's doing nothing for my spirit it's doing nothing for my faith glory to God church nothing is impossible for God nothing is impossible with God glory to God be aware that you may well you will have to contend with many voices that are trying to get your attention but Jesus still says don't be afraid only believe. You know, people in unbelief, if 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 there's not a, if there's something don't intervene, they'll remain in unbelief. Yeah. I'm talking about even on the brink of a miracle, okay? If they don't change the way they think, change the way they look at things, you've got to stop the negative, friend, if you're going to move on to the positive. Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Only believe. Okay? Even if you're in the middle of the negative, you can change. Even if it's already progressing, if it's, go, if it's already in progress, stop being afraid. So you can believe. Or is it believe so you'll stop being afraid? I don't know and I really don't care. I'm just going to do what Jesus said. Yeah. I'm not going to sit there and split hairs whether you've got to believe first so you won't be afraid or whether you need to stop being afraid so you can believe more. I don't know. I'm just telling you, I'm going to not do the one and start doing the other. Deal with your negative thoughts, your moods, your emotions, your attitudes so the Lord has an opportunity to bless you. God's a positive God. Nothing is too hard. No problem too great. No sickness too severe. No demon too powerful. No person too far gone. No situation beyond His reach. You will have to lose that negative attitude, friend. I mean, you've got to sow what it is you want. If you want some joy in your life, guess what kind of seeds you need to put in the ground? Come on now. It don't get no simpler than that. You don't like the harvest that's popping up all around you. You may need to look at what you've allowed to be planted in your heart or in your life. Amen. Faith is positive. Faith is a positive response, amen, to God's Word. It's believing He is and He's going to do what He said. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Yes. Isn't God positive towards you? Yes. Concerning you? All His promises are what? Yes. In Him and amen in Him. Towards you? Yes. How, many, how many believe God's a yes God? Yes. He is. Yes. He said all His promises was He said yes God. I know a lot of people think He's a no God. And does that no? But it's, it concerning His Word, His promise, is yes towards you. That's His will. That's what He wants. To have faith is to be positive. And let me say this about faith. Let me close. Faith is a um, belief without proof. It's trust without reservation. That's what it is. I'm not asking you to believe something without proof and be in faith like that. No, I just trust God unconditionally. I trust God without reservation. If, it, if, it's, if it's clear to me here, then I'm operating in it. I understand there's things in here that you might not be clear on. Well, then you need to... You just need to... You might not... Let me... Let me how, how can I say that? How, how am I trying to say that? There's some things in here you might not understand what's being said clearly. Let me say it like that. Well, it's hard to stand there. But those things which you do understand clearly, trust without reservation. That's faith. You may not understand the plan of God for your life clearly. But you clearly understand that He's good. And His plan for you is good. 
And if it's bad, that's not him. He's not using the, he's not using the devil to accomplish some uh, teaching purpose in your life, this, that, and the other. Now, he'll take what the enemy means for harm and get good out of it. But you can bypass the whole harm situation if, if, you know, if we'll listen to him. Faith is positive. God's a positive God. Now, what's that say about those who are always negative? I can tell you. It just means you haven't been spending enough time with the Lord. That's all that means. You judge yourself. I'm not here to judge you or anybody else this morning. But if you were... If it seems that you're more negative than you are positive... Ding, 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 ding. I might not be spending enough time with the things of God. See, it don't matter how long we pray or how much we sing... Uh, if we have a negative attitude, we haven't been spending enough time with Jesus. Because the Bible says, in His presence, fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Jesus changed your mind, your outlook, your, your attitude. If it's constant complaining, bickering, doubt, get in the, you need to get in the presence of the Lord and change you. Where confusion and strife is, is every evil thing. But in His presence... It's fullness of joy. You can tell what you've been hang who you've been hanging out with. Confusion and strife and every evil thing. Fullness of joy. We've complicated this. We're trying to find a gray area. Well, yeah, I know it says that, but that don't. But that's not me. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's you. It's you. You can find it in one part or the other. There's no there's no curve there for you or me or anybody else. It's Confusion and strife, that's every evil thing. Fullness of joy, that's over there in His presence. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Jesus won't allow you to keep on bringing negative attitudes around Him. You know what He'll say? Same thing He told them. They were laughing Him this morning. He said, y'all got to leave the room. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to do something here, and y'all can't be in here with that. Yeah. He put them out. He put them out. If you're insisting on your pity party, you'll have to leave. Yeah. Brother, I just need prayer. I just need this. I just, oh, that's good. We're here to pray for you. We're here to help you. And then, you know, but, 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 but if you're insisting on that, then, uh, there's not much I can do for you. Jesus put them out the room. He had something greater that he was tending to, and that wasn't going to help. You just don't know how much I care and how much I... That's not helping. Only believe, Jesus reminds us. And he also says this, he says, don't stop believing. What you... Remember? What is it that Jesus... What was Jerry's confession? Verse 23. If you come to my house, my daughter will be healed. If you come, or actually said, if you come and touch her, if you lay hands on her, that she may be healed, she shall live. That was his confession. And Jesus is saying, don't stop believing. Don't stop confessing. Don't change your confession now. Remember, church, I said, remember what you were trusted in, who you were trusted in in the first place. Amen? And don't stop now just because things got bad and it looks like it's over. So this morning, this week, always, Jesus' word still. Don't be afraid. Only believe. For that same mighty power, church, that raised Christ from the dead is directed to those who believe. It's for those who believe. That exceeding, who's the one who's able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. And then you stand up with me today. Glory to God. Glory to God. We talked about several things this morning. Faith and fear and doubt and trust. Let's just get real simple as we close this morning.